Here I'd like to show you how you can incorporate Final Gathering using Mental Ray for Maya. Final Gathering is an effect in Mental Ray that allows you to simulate indirect lighting or bounced light in your scenes. Final Gathering is a simplified version of indirect lighting that uses rays instead of photons, similar to ray tracing. Instead of calculating multiple bounces of a photon, it only calculates one bounce of a ray of light. And for that reason, it's a little simpler to control and to implement. So in this video, I'll show you how you can tune your Final Gathering settings to get a more realistic look in your renders. I've got a simple scene here set up in Maya, and I'll show you how I've set this up. I've got a Utah teapot set up in the corner of a simple room. There is one area light that's aiming directly at the teapot. And I've also got a orange wall set up and a blue wall so that we can see how Final Gathering contributes to the indirect illumination on the teapot. So I'm going to start out here with my render view, and I'm going to open up my render settings and you'll see here that I'm just going to start with a Maya software render of this particular scene with ray tracing enabled and I'll do a render of this scene so we can see what it looks like with ray tracing in Maya software and here in this uh, Maya software render you can see we're getting some typical ray tracing effects we've got some reflections happening in the surface of the teapot some specular highlights and uh, some soft shadows from the ray trace shadows happening in the direct lighting from that area light. So I'm going to save this in my render buffer so we can compare that image with a mental ray render. So now I'm going to switch my render over to mental ray. In my render settings I'm choosing render using mental ray and I'm not turning any of the features on in Mental Ray. This is just a regular ray trace render with no features enabled. So I'll render that so we can take a look at what it looks like using Mental Ray ray tracing. And here in this Mental Ray render, you can see that there's not a lot of difference between the Mental Ray render and the Maya software render using ray tracing. If I switch back and forth between both of these images, you can see maybe here there's a little bit of uh, specular highlights difference. Maybe the filtering is a little sharper in the mental ray version. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference between these two versions of the render. It took about twice as long to do the mental ray render than it did to do the Maya software render. But I should also point out that the shaders that I'm using in this scene are all default Maya software shaders. There's no mental ray shaders being used in here. It's just Lambert shaders and Blin shaders that I'm assigning to these geo. Uh, so there's no mental ray shading networks being used uh, in this scene. So now we can start to use mental ray to contribute some indirect lighting effects to our scene. I'm going to come over here and open up my render settings dialog box. And I want to make sure I'm rendering using mental ray. Then I'll switch over to the indirect lighting tab and select that. And I'm going to scroll down to the section labeled final gathering. If I enable Final Gathering, that will now contribute indirect lighting effects to our scene using the Final Gathering algorithm. Now that I've enabled Final Gathering, I can come up here and click on the render image so I can see how the indirect lighting is contributing to this scene. And what you can see here is that the overall image is brighter with Final Gathering turned on because Final Gathering is calculating the indirect lighting or the bounced light or the reflected light from the scene. With our ray traced image in Mental Ray, we're only getting the direct light from our area light that's contributing to the scene. But with Final Gathering turned on, it's calculating the light that bounces off the wall and onto the teapot and making the image brighter. So if we look here underneath the teapot, you can see where that area is getting more illumination because those indirect light rays are bouncing off the floor and illuminating the underside of the teapot. The other thing you'll notice is not only is the image brighter because of the indirect bounced lighting, but also the color is being transmitted from the walls onto the teapot. So on the left side of the image where the wall is orange, you'll see an orange cast to this side of the teapot. And the same thing's happening on the right side of the image. It's being tinted towards the blue because Final Gathering is picking up the color information from the bounced rays off of those walls onto the teapot. So that's an effect that helps to increase the realism in the indirect lighting in your scene. 
I'll show you some of the settings we can use to control how Final Gathering contributes to the scene. I'm going to switch over here to my Render Settings dialog box. And in the Render Settings dialog, I'm going to click on the Indirect Lighting and scroll down to the Final Gathering section. The first thing I'll show you is the point density. And the point density is the number of Final Gathering points added to your scene. For a simple scene such as this, we can bring this down to a, a level of 0.1. And if I render it with the lower point density, we can look at that to see how it compares. And with the lower point density, what you'll notice is that render time was much faster. It's about a minute and a half with the 0.1 setting. And with the 1.0 setting, it was about three minutes. So it's about half as long for this scene. And it's a very subtle difference here. The point density is the number of final gathering points added to the scene. And for a simple scene like this, we don't need that many final gathering points added to the scene. However, if you have a much more complex scene with more detailed geometry, or you're using an animated sequence, you may want to increase your point density to a 1.0. Another setting in Final Gathering is the point interpolation. And the point interpolation is an averaging of the points around the Final Gathering point that's being calculated. If I reduce this number to one, it's averaging less of the surrounding pixels. So if I uh, show you what that looks like with a setting of one, it's getting more of a blotchy render. And that's because it's not averaging in the surrounding area. When I increase this to a value of 10, it's averaging in the pixels in the nearby area so that it's, it gets a much smoother result here. Another setting that controls the quality of your final gather render is the accuracy. The accuracy controls the number of rays that are cast out from each final gathering point. If I reduce that to a value of 20 and render that, you can see how that contributes to the image. What you can see here with a lower accuracy setting is that we're getting a splotchy render out of our final gathering contribution. And that's because there are fewer final gathering rays being cast out into the scene. So with a lower number like 20, you get a more blotchy effect, but it's a faster render. So maybe you'd want to use a lower number like 20 when you're doing testing and then increase it when you're ready to do your final render. For a complex scene, again, with a lot of geo or uh, an animated sequence, you would probably go as high as a thousand. But for a simple still image like this, you can probably get away with a setting between uh, 200 and 500. So those are some of the render settings that contribute to the quality of your final gathering render. But I'd like to also show you how the shaders contribute to the look you get when you incorporate final gathering in your scene. So I'm going to close my render settings and open up my render uh, hypershade view by going to rendering editors and hypershade. And I'll select the shader that's assigned to the teapot in the scene. And when I double click that, it'll open up here in my attribute editor. And inside the attribute editor, and if I scroll down to mental ray, you can see that there are two settings here that will contribute to our final gathering effect, the irradiance and the irradiance color. The way these two settings work in final gathering is that the irradiance setting is controlling how much this surface shader is contributing final gathering effects onto the surrounding geometry shaders. And the irradiance color is actually the reverse of that. It's controlling how much the surrounding shaders have a final gathering effect back onto this shader's surface. So I'll demonstrate how that works. The default setting for irradiance is black. And if I come over here to the input node next to that, I'm going to remap that with a ramp color. And then instead of using a gradient here, I'm just going to delete the black side of that shader. So all I'm contributing is a pure white color to this shader. If I come back now to my shader for the teapot, you can see that the irradiance is now full on white. Let's render that to see how that contributes to the final gathering effect. So here you can see what the irradiance is actually contributing to the scene, and it's giving an effect like the geometry is glowing. And that's actually a good analogy for what final gathering does to your scene. It's as if the geometry is glowing, and that glow is contributing to the surrounding shaders in the scene. So if I compare this with the previous render, you can see how the irradiance is actually contributing to the surrounding geometry, and the teapot is affecting the brightness of the geometry around it. Obviously, this is a very bright setting on this irradiance, but it shows how the irradiance setting contributes to the surrounding geometry in this scene. I'm going to come back in here to my hypershade window, and I'll delete that irradiance map. 
and now it's back to uh, spring that back to a setting of black for its default and now I'll show you the inverse effect of how the environment can affect the shader on the teapot by mapping the irradiance color. The irradiance color controls how much the surrounding geometry in the scene contributes to the final gathering effect on the current shader. So if I come in here to the irradiance color and I click on that color swatch, the initial value is set to white with a value of 1. If I increase that to a value of 2 and render that, we can see how that contributes to the final gathering effect. And now here in this render you can see how the teapot shader is receiving more of the final gathering effect from the surrounding geometry. If I compare this with the previous render, you can see that more of the final gathering effect is contributing to the sides of the teapot and that also the direct illumination from the light source is much brighter and blown out because it is increasing the contribution of the final gathering rays to the shader on the teapot. So that's a nice way that you can control how much final gathering contributes to each shader in your scene by controlling the irradiance and the irradiance color. I'm going to double click this swatch again and drop this back down to a value of 1 and show you one more way that we can control the final gathering contribution to this scene. I'll come up here to my render settings and open the render settings dialog box and select the indirect lighting tab in mental ray and I'll scroll down to the final gathering section where I will adjust the primary diffuse scale. If I double click on that shader you can see the default is a value of 1 set to white. If I come in here and type in a value of 2 on that, that's going to act as a multiplier and it will increase the overall effect of the final gathering contribution to our scene. So I'll come up here and render that image to see what that looks like. And with this render you can see we're getting a very similar effect when we increase the irradiance color on the individual shader, except now when we increase the primary diffuse scale, it's affecting all of the geometry in the scene and all of the shaders of the scene are contributing more to the final gathering effect. So this is a nice way to punch up the final gathering contribution in your overall scene simply by increasing the primary diffuse scale. However, one of the things you'll notice is the direct lighting coming from our area light is now blown out compared to what we saw before. We were getting a nice specular highlight. Now that highlight is blown out because final gathering not only calculates the indirect light, but it also calculates the direct light. So what we can do to compensate for that is reduce the brightness or intensity of our area light in the scene. So I'll come up here to my hypershade window and in the hypershade I'll select the lights tab and if I double click the area light I can see the intensity settings on that light. If I reduce that value from 2000 to 1500 now the intensity of that direct light will be reduced in the scene and I can render that image to see how that compares. I'll save this one to the buffer and re-render the image so we can compare them. And in this render you can see we're still getting an increase now in the final gather contribution, but the direct lighting contribution from the area light has been reduced because we reduced the intensity of that light. So if I compare it to the previous render, we're still getting a final gathering contribution, but the specular highlight is much more controlled because the direct illumination has been reduced. So I'm happy with the overall look of this render and the final gathering contribution. All I have to do now is tune the quality settings in the render settings dialog box so I can get a nice smooth render from our final gathering contribution. So I'm going to go over here to my render settings dialog box. So I'll come down here to the final gathering section and I'm going to increase my accuracy to 200 to get a smoother render. I'm also going to increase the point density to 0.5 and the point interpolation I will increase to 15. All of these three settings will smooth out the contribution of final gathering to our scene. And then finally down here there's a setting for secondary diffuse bounces. If I increase that from 0 to 1 what that's going to do is add a second bounce and that second bounce is going to increase the intensity of the final gathering contribution to the scene. So I can come up here and save this render for comparison and then I'll render this scene again so we can see what it looks like. And here you can see we're getting a much higher quality render out of our final gathering settings. With the increased accuracy we're adding more final gathering points to our scene. 
with the increased point density, we're averaging those calculations together to get a smoother result. And with the increase in the secondary diffuse bounces, we're getting more of a final gathering contribution to our scene from that second bounce. And if I compare this with the previous rendered version, you can see we've reduced the blotchiness and increased the final gathering contribution and gotten rid of some of the uh, splotchy artifacts in the previous render. So those are some of the settings you can use to control the quality and intensity of the final gathering contribution in your scenes.